It seems simple, but it always helps to see this stuff in action. In this demo, I want to show you how the authentication process works. And we're going to do it without any code. We're going to do it really raw using Fiddler and the browser. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, authenticate and get our access code. Before we do that, let me come over here to Azure Active Directory, and I'm going to go ahead and log in. I want to log into my tenant and make sure that I have access to my application to see some of those values. We're going to need some of these values in crafting the URLs to make our lives a little bit easier. So I'll click on my directory. I'll go to my applications. And if you recall from a, the previous module, we created uh, manually created this application called the Pluralsight Office 365 application. One of the things I'm going to do is go in and configure this guy. I'm going to change his um, sign-on URL to be a little bit different because this URL is uh, the actual URL of the, of the sign-in page. So we'll just go to a valid page there. I'll make that one change. The other change I'm going to want to do is let's go create a key because we're going to need a key. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So we'll grab the key that we just created. And what I've done is I've created a uh, little page here to keep track of a bunch of our stuff, a little file here uh, in my little in subtext, sublime text. So our secret, it's going to be equal to this value. And then let's also get the ID for our client. So I'll copy that out. And we'll write that one down as well. And then the last thing we'll need is the tenant ID. Let's go to the endpoints and I'll just copy this value onto the clipboard for the token endpoint. And then we'll switch back over here and I'll say tenant ID and we don't need this whole thing. We just need the GUID part. Okay, so now we can go about trying to authorize. So the first thing we'll do is we need to go to the authorization endpoint because remember we need to get a code. So let's go ahead and fill these values in. I'm first going to need my tenant ID. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we'll plug that in right here. Some more real estate. We're also going to need the ID of our client. So here's our application client ID. The redirect URI is where we're going to send them to once they successfully authenticate. So I'll say HTTPS Pluralsight.com slash A slash sign in. Now this link really doesn't matter because I'm going to be using Fiddler to track with this to track the response that comes back and I'm going to see that in the browser. So I don't really need to worry so much about this right now. Um, I just want to pick an existing one so we didn't get a bunch of broken links. The other thing I'm going to ask for here is on the response type, I'm going to ask for a code. That's the authorization code I'm looking for. So I'll just take these values. I'm going to put them on a new, a new little line here so we can add this onto one single line. I'll copy it to the clipboard. Now I'm going to come over to Fiddler and I'm going to clear out everything in Fiddler so that we have a nice clean request. So let's go over to the browser. I'll open up a new tab. And let's go through and authenticate. Now, I'm already logged in. So actually, before we do this, let's go ahead and let's log out so we get the full experience. Okay, now that we've been signed out of uh, Azure using our organization account, let's go in, let's plug in that authorization link. So I'll go ahead and plug that guy in. And we see here we're first being prompted to log in. So I'll go ahead and log in. So I first go ahead and log in and it takes me over here to Pluralsight. Well, we don't really care about that. What I care about though is if I go over to Fiddler, let's see what happened. So let's find where we, what we were looking for. So we can see there's where we were doing all of our sign out stuff. And here's where we tried to log in. So we passed in our values there. We can see there's the code that we passed in. There's the redirect URI we passed in. And there's the thing saying we're asking for an authorization code. That redirected me over here to this page and then this page. So you can see all of this stuff going through here. This is all being redirected in Azure. I mean, back to the, to the page where I'm doing my actual sign in. That's this page right here. So if I click on this, we can see all the values of the stuff I signed in on. Um, I'm not about to show you my password, so I've masked it out right here. That was what was submit to the, submitted to the server. 
Once that submission was complete, we can see here the authentication happened, and then down here, you can see a request to Pluralsight. What we can see here is on the, um, in the parameters at the top, we can see that the authorization code was passed back, and I can see the full response that was actually spit back by Pluralsight, but we don't really care about what their site looks like right now. We just want to get this authorization code. So let me go take that, and I'll copy it, and let's go put that into our little, into our notes. So we have our authorization code, and that's equal to this really long string. Now that we have the authorization code, now we need an access token. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna use this token endpoint to do that. So let's go ahead and build a request. I'll go over here, I'll copy out the tenant ID. I'm gonna plug that into the URL. I'm also gonna grab the client ID, plug that in, the, re the redirect URI, we're going to send them back to pluralsite.com slash a slash sign in. This isn't going to really matter because we're not going to really get redirected anywhere in this case. The client secret, here's our secret. Now, there's something special about this secret and that it needs to be URL encoded. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my browser and I'm going to go find a uh, URL encoded, uh, an encoder here. So URL encode. And I'll grab this one right here, MeyerWeb.com. I'll go ahead and plug this value in. I'll hit encode. I'll then grab that value out. If you recall, it had a little uh, equal sign on the end of it. That was going to screw up our query string. But this isn't actually a query string. We're going to submit this in the form of a form post. The grant type that I'm going to specify is going to be an authorization code. The code that we're gonna pass across is gonna be this giant authorization code that we got a minute ago, because it's an authorization code, which we specified in the grant type. And the resource, well, let's get an access token that's gonna to hit the uh, exchange uh, part of the Office 365 APIs for contacts, calendar, and mail. So I'll just type in outlook.office365.com. So I'll grab these values. First, let's go there and grab the URL. I'm gonna go back over, back over to Fiddler. And I'm gonna plug this URL in into the Composer tab to do a manual request. I'm gonna make this a post. We're gonna say that the type of data we're sending is equal to application slash X form URL encoded. Now I need to pass the data across. So I'll come back over here to my little clipboard, my virtual clipboard, copy this value out and paste it in the body. So you can see we have the resource, the code, the grant type is authorization code, the secret, the redirect URI and the client ID. So I'm gonna go ahead and break, remove all the line breaks from this and just send it off a nice clean string. And so let's go ahead and run this. So when I click execute, we see we get an error. I wonder what the error is all about. Let's take a look at it. And you can see here what I'm on is the inspectors tab. I clicked on web forms. It's everything up at the top. Uh, I see something strange right there. That There's no www at the beginning of our redirect URI. And I'll bet you if we scroll across, sure enough, that doesn't match. Uh, that's an easy fix. Let's go back to the composer and let's update that. Let's put the www in there. And then we'll re-execute it. And this time we get a status code of 200. And if we look at the inspector for that, now we see what came back. There's our access token. There's our refresh token as well. That's the resource. And we can see the scope is all the permissions that we requested.